2011 through 2014 Toyota Sienna. Amplifier installation underneath the front dash. So as you can see, I've removed the glove box and I've run the 4 gauge NVX power wire through the grommet. Okay, so here's the engine compartment side of the grommet uh, where the power, power wire was uh, fed through. Uh, if you can see it, it's right there. I'm touching it right now. That's the wire, the 4 gauge power wire uh, that I ran through the grommet with the dielectric grease to help get it through. There's a, before you run this wire through, there's a um, little rubber cap on this. Uh, penetration that I had to just clip off with a pair of um, pliers, uh, cutting pliers, uh, Lyman's pliers. Um, and then I ran the power wire, I put a um, zip tie, made sure it's tucked out of the way, away from the engine. I ran it behind here, with the ground wire, a little protection on there. Later on I'll put some uh, wire loom over that as well to keep it uh, protected from chafing on any sharp edges. Uh, I've run it up and over and under the cowl. Where the windshield wipers are, you can see here, I'll shine a line on there, there's a zip tie. There's more zip ties. Okay, and I've run it sort of underneath the cowl, zip tied it. Uh, zip tie it there, and I, as many zip ties as you can get on here, uh, the better. I run it behind the brake fluid reservoir, and up behind the fuse box, and over, and I've pre-made my connections with the inline fuse as close to the battery as you, you can get it. You can see mine's about three inches, um, and eventually, when I'm ready, I'll connect this to that nut right there. You can see I'm battery positive terminal. Right. And this is a um, just an inline fuse holder I got from Sonic Electronics. Um, pretty inexpensive, I think less than $15 with an 80 amp fuse, uh, which is sufficient for the amplifiers that I'll be using. So you might be wondering how I zip tied these to the cowl. I didn't modify it in any way. Um, with a plastic um, shroud um, on the outside of the vehicle, connects to the frame of the vehicle or the unit body. There's um, these little inserts, little plastic clips with holes in the metal here. And I was able to slip the zip tie through that hole without affecting it. Okay, so I have... Uh, a couple of uh, NVX micro amplifiers you can find on Sonic Electronics and also Sound Solutions Audio, uh, which is, I believe, a little less money on, on their website. Uh, they also have on Sound Solutions Audio uh, some really nice uh, American made amplifiers that many people just don't know about. But um, anyway, what I did was I, I bought some um, Simpson Strong Tie A24L brackets. Um, it's like a 16 gauge I think. Uh, galvanized metal and I just bent them up in my vise and I put some together and I made this custom bracket uh, that's going to mount underneath the dashboard. So I have two that I bent on a uh, sort of a 45 degree angle or somewhere close to that. No support the four channel amplifier and then for the subwoofer I attached to the bottom of that bracket uh, some more Simpson anchors and I made some supports for the uh, mono subwoofer NBX amplifier as you can see okay. I've already attached my uh, power and ground and I just used 
number 10 self-drilling uh, tech screws or self-drilling uh, machine screws to uh, fasten these the anchor these brackets together um, very simple um, and I also used the same thing to mount the amplifiers to the bracket so there's four connectors that come with the amplifiers uh, and I mounted these little footers on the amplifier and then I just put a self-drilling screw through them and then I took a grinder and I just ground off the side that protruded through the other end so it wouldn't damage the amplifier below it or you know, cause it a conflict when I was installing it and mark up my amplifier more than I have already. Uh, kind of a drawback to these NVX amplifiers is that they scratch real easy but since it's under my dashboard I don't really care that much. I just want it to work and perform. So this uh, this is an inline fuse that comes with the uh, NVX MVP4 or A4. Um, I know it's not the recommended um, 8 gauge wire by NVX, but uh, that doesn't really matter uh, because uh, I've attached 8 gauge after that. So um, even though this is uh, I believe for a 12 gauge wire, uh, it is. Uh, it's so short that it's not going to be a factor in limiting current to this amplifier, which is really a highly efficient amplifier anyway. It's probably about 90% Class D technology. Okay, so uh, this is the passenger side underneath the dashboard of a Toyota Sienna LE. Uh, these are the brackets that I'm, or the mounting points um, inside the vehicle underneath the dashboard behind the glove box that I'm going to use to mount the brackets that I made for the NVX amplifiers to. Um, try and pan out so you can kind of get an idea here. Alright, so I've got some flashlights. Here's the dashboard inside of the car. Alright. Okay, so I, uh, I'm all by myself here, so I had to mount the bracket underneath the dash onto those two uh, studs I previously mentioned. So here it is. That is the bracket. There are the NVX amplifiers. You can see the um, the nuts and the fender washers that I used to attach them to the vehicle on those studs. Okay. And there's the subwoofer amplifier and the four channel amplifier is up on top behind those. It's nice and neat and tucked away. It's easy to wire to the radio and the battery because it's, because it's so close. It's a short distance. Um, those nuts again I mentioned are M6 by 1.0 pitch with um, 3 16 fender washers. Alright so um, I just want to do a quick run through on how to remove the rear uh, panel in the van to gain access to the rear speakers which are located right here um, behind this grill. Okay, So I previously had installed some kicker uh, CS65s in there which have a shallow enough uh, depth to allow for that. Um, so what I did, this is the driver's side which is basically the same as the passenger side except for that little temp sensor. All right. I think I mentioned this in the other video. That little temp sensor right there. Uh, when you start to pry this panel out, you'll have to disconnect it before you pull that panel out all the way or you'll break the wire. Uh, but they, uh... All right, so what you have to do to get this panel out is 
trying to do this with one hand is not easy. Remove this trim piece for the seat belt. Remove that trim piece. And then it'll, you'll gain access to the bolts. Uh, the best thing to use is uh, Harbor Freight has some nice trim removal tools I used to just pop those off. And then it's just a 14 millimeter bolt. You remove the bolt. Uh, the same thing again right there. Uh, and then you have to take this piece off the track. So you have a little more clearance for this panel here to pull past by this. Just peel back the carpet like that. Okay. And then everything else is uh, just those um, Christmas tree clips. So you have to take the seal, pull it back, and then grab this panel and very gently pop the clips, pull the panel back. And if you do it right, it looks like this side here. All right, here's the kicker speaker installed in the original factory frame for the old Toyota speaker, which I cut out. And I filled in the, uh, the holes that were letting the air pad bypass it, even though it's open air anyway, it's infinite baffle. It still helps to seal up the holes with uh, a hot glue gun. Okay. On the back, uh, I use the hot glue gun to secure the wire to the speaker on the inside of the frame so we wouldn't want to put any rattles. Okay. The larger terminal there is the positive on the kicker speaker. And to figure out the um, polarity on the Toyota terminal, I used the Crutchfield supplied adapters, which turns out to be the red wire on the passenger side, um, where it plugs into the Toyota connector there, uh, is positive, and the yellow wire on the driver's side is positive. One discovery I made was that um, the placement of the screws on the original speaker adapter uh, if you're not careful and you use the kicker supplied screws, uh, they can bottom out on the body panel, as you can see in the picture here. Um, so I'm going to have to take this longer screw out and replace it with a shorter screw of the same thickness. So here's the shorter screw. It looks like a number six screw to me in this hole right here, and it'll be short enough that it won't bottom out on the body panel. So here we are. Um, with the shorter screw installed, you can see now. Uh, one thing you'll notice, uh, and a lot of people complain about these speakers, they don't make enough bass. Uh, no speaker, no matter how good it is, is ever going to make enough bass, especially a six and a half inch speaker. And, um, in a situation like this where there is no actual enclosure. All right, this is an infinite baffle ins installation. The back of the speaker is not enclosed or sealed in any way. So it will not make any bass, but that's okay because I have a subwoofer.